<laughs> hey everybody what's up what's up what's up good afternoon oh my gosh it's saturday well it just depends on when you're watching when it is but it's saturday right now as we're doing this live i'm so incredibly grateful and excited i got uh some of my favorite women are joining me today so i'm telling you right now if you're watching this feed um, this is for men too, for sure, but definitely you need to tag your girlfriend, you need to tag your sister, you need to tag them and say, you have got to hear this conversation. Because I promise you, you guys are probably having these kinds of conversations. And sometimes you just need that confirmation to know that you're not doing too much, you're not off track, and that it's going to take all that in some in order for you to come into and live the life that I believe God created you to live. So definitely um, share this feed really, really quickly and let people know. Yes, uh, Chef Josh, he said, brothers are here too. Yes, and we salute you, brothers. We love you for sure. Um, so yeah, share this feed with everybody because we're going to have some really, really great conversations today. So let me jump right on here. I got my beautiful sister, China Bethley is in the building. Yay! Woo! I did do it. Yes. Girl, I'm doing great. I'm excited you're on. I love those locks too. Those are so cute. Oh, my daughter did them. They're so long. They're so convenient. They're just like, let's work out. Let's get your whole life together. Let's go. And you can still go ahead and lay some edges and be cute. <laughs> okay, yes. Now, do they feel heavy at all? Not at all. They're lightweight. They're so <laughs> light. That's what I love about them. They're so, so lightweight. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's like four hours and they're like super long, but it's, they're it. convenient. I love it. I love it. It's too fun. So, all right, let's um, jump right on in here. I want to ask you first, um, China. Like, what were some of the what were some of your like examples um, uh, of growing up? Um, you know, as a little girl, oh, we got Wanda. Let me add Wanda. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Yes, all of this beauty. Yes, you look beautiful. I'm loving the hair. Yes. I know, right? Yes. So we were just starting to get into it. So I was telling everybody, go ahead and share this feed because I really feel like I can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me, girl. Me? Okay, you can't hear me. Uh-oh, let's see. Can you hear China China? Can you guys hear me? Can you can you hear me, Wanda? I can hear China, yes. You oh wow! You've done that before. You may have to log out and come back in. You may have to log out and come right back in. Yeah. All right. Let me do that. I'll do that okay. right you look beautiful. <laughs> yes. So I wanted to ask you, what were some of the examples that you saw growing up where women and money were concerned? I just, I'm just wondering, what, what was that like growing you know, up? But it wasn't up close and personal, unfortunately. Um, it was through TV. One of the first shows that I remember that I saw that totally inspired me was Boomerang. It was actually my first time seeing a woman in power. And what I believe I loved about it, it was the, it was the, it was the moment that I knew I wanted to go in business when I saw that woman as an example. So I didn't see it in, you know, you want to check to see if she can hear you. Can you hear it? Can you hear? Yes. <laughs> Yay. Awesome sauce. Awesome. Awesome. So it wasn't it wasn't up close and personal. It wasn't um, anybody that was in my immediate circle or family. It was actually through a movie, Boomerang. And I never forget, I believe it was probably early 90s that I saw um, Jacqueline from Boomerang, okay, which is Ray, Rob, Robin Gibbons, I believe it is. But I, yes, when I saw this movie, it just rose me up in my spirit to believe, right? So she was the boss. She was the one with the, the corner office. She was the one uh, that was the executive. She was the one that when she walked in, who thought he was the boss, you know, Eddie Murphy was like, oh, wait a minute. I thought she was just a beautiful woman that I could hit on all the while. I got an answer to you. And that changed my whole trajectory on how I saw wealth and success and what I wanted. And so it gave me an ambition that I could go all the way to the top and supersede what I had ever seen in my immediate. So it wasn't like somebody around me that I could glean from it. That's okay. It was absolutely um, Robin Gibbons and Boomerang, Jacqueline Hunt. 
Wow. So let me ask you. So there was nobody really in the neighborhood community oh. family where you saw women and money? I guess, obviously not. What was the perception? I mean, before you saw Boomerang, what was your perception of women and money, really? I think I saw women as the caretakers. I saw them work hard. My mom was my first example of a hard working woman, right? So I saw her go get money to provide for her family, right? I saw her do what was necessary for us to, you know, have a, a, a roof over our head and food on the table. And I learned work ethic from her. But when it, it comes down to finances and wealth, um, that wasn't necessarily the visual inside of my community. There's nobody in my family lineage. Okay, so my my aunt, my cousin, she's my cousin, right? The closest thing to me was my cousin um, is Burnett Johnson, who is a judge in New Orleans, Louisiana. Mm. So we would go to her home maybe once a summer to swim in her pool and she lived in a gated subdivision mm. beautiful homes and there were celebrities who lived back there that was the closest that i saw but mm. it was still a bit of a distance so it gave me a glimpse but it wasn't in my immediate um as much so i do remember that that was for sure the best of the best mm. so go and be a judge perhaps and this is the lifestyle that you can get. Mm -hmm. But it, it wasn't, I wasn't intimate enough to see other values besides that. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. I still so appreciated it. Yeah. But that was basically, that was. Yeah. That was, that was and, I think, and I think this is such a good conversation. Guys, share this feed because. Yeah, I'll share I think, mine now. I know, right? Because we have to really like break down where our relationship with money was, where it is, and where should it be. Wanda, beautiful. What was growing up, like, what was your perception specifically where women and money were concerned? <laughs> so I feel like I can really relate with what uh, China said. You know, wealth was just something that was just a part from us, you know, and I think growing up, I, I mean, when I talk about like releasing a poverty mindset, that is such a, a conversation. I remember having it for the first time reading uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. And I was arguing with the book because he was saying things that were highly offensive to me mm. and only to realize that the reason why I was offended was because I had a poverty mindset. And I remember struggling, like actually going through the book and going, <laughs> who does this guy think he is, you know, but really reading it and having this transformation process as I'm going through this, like literally me in a book and getting to the end and, and saying, okay, I have a poverty mindset. That's mm -hmm. how I was raised. I need to acknowledge that. I need to acknowledge that I was raised in lack. I see lack. I understand lack. I know how to move in lack. And if I'm not careful, I will be so comfortable in lack that I will maintain it and attract mm -hmm. it. And so for me growing up, you know, the women that were successful in my eyes, the closest I, I saw success was my teachers. Mm. And I specifically remember there was a principal I had in middle school and in high school, and she was such a boss. Like when she walked down the hallways, everyone stood at attention. And I remember getting in trouble a couple of times and sitting in her office and she would do this thing where she would say, go to my office, my door is unlocked, you sit and you wait for me. And as I was sitting in that room, I would see, you know, all of her accolades on the wall. She went to college in states I'd never been to. She had networks of people that were just more than what I understood. And I think what, when, when you ask, like, what is your, um, your first relationship with seeing money and seeing successful women and seeing that, you know, when you're poor, you don't understand the difference. Uh, like really between wealth and power, you kind of just put it all together. And mm -hmm. so for me, I just, I just attributed her power as it's wealthy. It was wealthy. It was something yeah. I wanted. I wanted people to stand at attention yeah. when I walked in the room. I wanted people to respect me. I wanted to be a, a force in my community and kind of growing up, that was probably the closest I ever got to uh, quote wealth. It was just who she was to people, who she like, who she really was in our in our community. It was so much bigger than our school, 
And I think more than anything, um, the reason that stood out for me is because what I really wanted is I wanted a life that was that was worth something. I wanted to be able to give. I, I wanted to have that same effect. And so, you know, kind of moving out of that, you know, poverty, lack, mm, environment, young, young adult, I'm on my own, I'm making money. And the truth is, I remember saying, even when I met my husband, I remember saying, no, I don't know a girl like me. Like when I met my husband, I had three jobs, my own apartment, I'm 22, 23 years old. And I had this chip on my shoulder, like, um, I'm not dating, I'm, I'm doing me, I'm gonna do big things you've never met. You know, it was a lot of ego. What I, really, what I was really trying to say was, you know, I'm on a mission to to try and become something I've never seen. Yeah. Wow. You wow. know, and 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 of course I had great women in my life that you know, people who know my story, my teachers really raised me. And mm. they kept me out the system and they kept my head on straight and they kept me out the streets and, and from associating with certain people. Mm. They really raised me and it, I wanted to do something like that for people. I didn't really know what it was. Mm. I just happened to find my groove in wealth creation. Mm. And so, you know, I think it's important that we do things like this because you have to understand that there's an entire world of women that also are trying to become something they've never seen. That's why wow. representation is so important. That's why we have to make sure that the people that are at the bottom of the totem pole in our societies are, are getting that extra push, getting the communities they need, getting the resources, the exposure they need. Because I really believe when those people win, everybody can win. And so, you know, this is for the girl or the woman on the line who is, you know, I know I meant to do something more. I don't know what. I know that this can't be it. I don't know what can be. You know, all I know is this don't feel right. And I know there's more. Yeah. And I think that's where it starts. And really, yeah. if we're being if we're being real, it, that's the Holy Spirit whispering to you what your purpose can be if you just step yeah. into bravery. And yeah. I, I will challenge all of us. You know, we still have so much work to do as women, like breaking, breaking the patriarchy. I would challenge all of us to really have a desire to go and be something you've never even seen. Mm, that is so, so, so good. And I want to address, uh, uh, both of y'all said so many good things already. I want to address this part because I know there are probably some women that are that are watching that, because um, for me, I saw women who married rich men um, take care of them. And I and I don't really remember, remember having a lot of conversation with women that were in control of their money or understood their money. And I had two grandmothers who had done well for themselves, but they never sat me down, you know, basic things like we're going to open up a savings account for you, be a businesswoman. But there was no real practicality in it. Um, hey, Kathy, <laughs> we love you. Um, but so China, because I want to address the mothering part, because I feel like I know a lot of women who have dealt with this. I've dealt with it. I think we've all dealt with this. Hey, Robin, where you feel like, hey, I want to make sure I'm being a good wife. Yeah. I want to make sure I'm being a good mom. I want to make sure that my husband and my children love me. But I definitely want the bad, but I feel like I have to wait till maybe they're grown to really go after my dreams because I got to be there for them like maybe my mom wasn't for me or my dad wasn't for me. Can you talk about that? Because you have two small children, Tanya, a teenager and a husband. We've had these conversations. Hey, Ann, we love you. Getting all our flag is right. Mm. But, um, you know, we've had that conversation a lot where it's like, oh, child, we were up last night. I don't know. What was that? One o'clock in the morning, China? Whispering, yeah. being with me, knocked yeah. out. I don't want to get out of the bed because you know I've been working all day. He been working all right. day. You know I mean, but we're sharing this. We're sharing this moment of supernatural. Uh, let's let me say it like this: It's supernatural from a spiritual standpoint, but it is applicable for anybody because the space that we're in, I like to call this a turbocharged space, a turbocharged yeah. space where your money is concerned and a hyper growth space where your wealth is concerned. Guys, you need to share this feed right now. Some of you have been watching, you've been teetering. It's time to get decisive about your life. But trying to deal with really quickly, being a mom, dealing with some of the things that I know you've dealt with. 
I dealt with. I think Wanda probably is dealt with, but you had to reconcile. What, yeah. How did you reconcile? I still need to be a businesswoman. How did you reconcile this? And I'll be right back. Y'all keep going. Yeah, I think that that's something that has to happen quickly. Like um, at the end of the day, you'll find yourself blaming everybody else for you not being where you need to be, where God has called you to be, where God has assigned you to be, because you decided to put everything before your purpose. And I think it's such a disservice. And I think it's so dishonoring. It's a disservice to you and it's dishonoring to God to put everything before your purpose. Your kids come before your purpose, your education or your degree or whatever comes before your purpose. Your job comes before your purpose. Your spouse comes before your purpose. Your family comes before your purpose. You continue to put yourself at the end of the line feeling so unfulfilled and living in just a part of you. A part of you is a mom, a part of you is a wife, a part of you maybe is a student that's going to school or a part of you is an employee at that job, but you want to be whole. And for me, I know that I would have been suffocating in wanting to blame somebody for this greatness that God has put on the inside of me, this champion that he's put on the inside of me, this call and anointing that he's put on the inside of me, if I was not living in that space. And you tend to, you know, you know, you, you, you tend to feel like that's your safety net and saying, well, when the kids get of this age and when the kids finish school and when the, the husband do this, so when I finish this or when I get this, always a when I, and I think it's a cowardly way to say that because I don't know what I feel like I need to do in this very moment, or because like Wanda said, because I'm walking into who I've never seen before. I've never seen this point of contact before. So how could that be me if I never seen nobody in my blood? line do it. I've never seen anybody up close and personal do the, the things that God has shown me. Now, God has shown it to me in my dreams. I've seen it in my imagination. I've seen it in my vision, but I don't know how to walk that thing out. I believe that it's imperative that you understand that as a woman, you have to be the best that you can be for your children to the single moms out there. While you're waiting for your children, you're saying, I'm not going to even allow you to see in me. What I didn't see in my mind. I'm not going to even allow you to see in me what I didn't see in my bloodline. I'm not going to even allow you to see in me that point of contact that I needed. And I think it's so detrimental. So not only is it um, it's, it's dishonoring to God because he placed a gift in you that the world needed to see. And before the world needed to see it, your children needed to see it. They needed to see you rise up in your greatness. They needed to see you rise up in your power. They needed to see you rise up in your courage. Your spouse needed to see it. But far too many times we wait on what we call support, which mm. is really permission mm. from other people to go and do what God has already permissioned us to do. Mm. So God has given you the gift. He's given you the anointing. He's put you in the environment. But you get off of a call like this with three of the most intelligent women, anointed women that you will ever meet in your life and you go ask your friend who you know you are the you the smartest one in the group, sis. I'm just saying, sis, you really the one. You really the one. Like, sis, you got to be honest with yourself. You know when it comes down to well creation. You know when it comes down to the ideas. You know when it comes down to the courage, sis. She really needs you right now. She needs you to say, this is what I got for us, right? But you go to her because you're seeking that permission from somebody to say it's okay so that if it's not okay, you can find somebody to blame. You go into your spouse who you know is not equipped in this area of wealth and finance. So you say, you know he ain't a quit. You, you know, know he ain't a quit. You know you the one that's always coming up with it. That's just how God created it. It's okay. We all have something that we carry. Now you know you the one between you and your husband. You know this, but you decided that. Today, you wanted to be submissive, but when you bought them bundles, you weren't submissive. When you bought those red bottoms, you wasn't submissive. When you decided to spend that money he didn't know about, you wasn't submissive. But now that you want to learn a skill set, partnering the wealth circle with women who can help your whole 
family bloodline help your whole last name so that he can be proud of you so that your children can be proud of you all of a sudden you need his permission yeah yeah it's important sis that as a woman i remember the moment jewel i never forget when i got involved in this industry of network marketing this to me is the and i know it's so misunderstood but this is the greatest place in the world that you could be, especially yeah. in the time right now. Yeah. Because what we have right here is priceless. I'm amongst my sisters yeah. that I get to glean from and learn from. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have all the answers. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have it all figured out. I don't have to know everything. You yeah. get a chance to be a part of something that people would spend tens of thousands of dollars for to just be amongst this. Yeah. So it helps to develop your mind. So I would say, I remember the moment, Jewel, when I had to make a decision and I had created something in my head and you receive what you believe, whether it's true or not. I believe and I received this story that I created in my head. It had not manifested, but I thought that, you know, the kind of husband I had, it was going to be kind of tough for all of a sudden to have this lifestyle change where I'm traveling around the world. And I, I wanted that for my, I wanted, I wanted to do what I saw the women come before me do inside this space. But I was like, dang, I ain't going to really, really pull that off. Like how all of a sudden I'm gone all the time. How all of a sudden, you know, I had a, just a daughter at the time. I was doing hair, making a transition. I created this reality in my mind that really wasn't real. So we believe things that are not even true. And then we come up with scenarios around that. The truth is, I remember I was getting on a flight and I was like, I'm going to do it. I don't care. I God, once I hear your voice, especially for the men and women of God out there, Jewel, we got too many people who know the word, but for whatever reason, when it's time to make a bold decision, they start to shrink. How you gonna shrink in what you just prayed for and then God provided it to you? Now you're talking about you're gonna go do some more prayer. Like what you trying to do? You 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 saying that God, I'm not really sure if you're right, so I'm gonna come back three, four times to circle around because you decided to be a coward in this moment. You got to rise up in your queenship right now, sis. You yeah. pray for it, you throw it up, move and trust. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I was saying. Yeah, it's about, no, that's good. It's about implementing your execution. A lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times, Wanda, China, the execution of what I know I have heard and I am hearing. And so we have to develop to become executors. Like, let me go after it. Wanda, you also, I mean, y'all got a y'all got a tribe over there. We got a tribe, but they adults. Y'all got a tribe and they still in the house. How have you reconciled for the women that are watching? And everybody, and, and this is a very bold statement, but I believe everybody needs to learn about this digital empire that's happening right before our eyes. I have an article I'm gonna share with you guys in just a moment, but to me this type of wealth education, because you're gonna get us, you're gonna get Wanda, you're gonna get China, you're gonna get a host of other amazing people that will embrace you, support you, love you, cheer you on, you can ask questions, but how did you reconcile, I'm mommy, I'm wife, but I'm also about to be businesswoman? So here's, here's the truth, you gotta pick your heart, everything's hard pick your heart. And I had a choice. I could either pick my heart in nursing, working 12 plus hour shifts, dropping the mm. babies off. If I have a six to six shift or a seven to seven shift, I got to be out the house at 5.30 a.m. Drop the I, I was the mom that was at the daycare doors, looking at the doors like, hey, it's, uh, it's 5.59. Can y'all open these doors? You know, I was the mom that was dropping the babies off when they were still asleep, working in the 12 hour shift, getting off at really 7.30. Y'all nurse, nurses, y'all know that off that uh, reporting off to that nurse when she walks in just on time, it's the most annoying thing as a nurse. So really that 12 hour shift turns into a 13 hour shift. At eight o'clock PM, I'm picking the kids up from the nannies because the daycare only allows you to have them there 10 hours a day and they're asleep or I'm trying to you know throw a corn dog at them on the way home. Wow. and put them to bed it's nine ten o'clock at night maybe i can take a shower maybe i can do a load of laundry maybe i can spend time with my husband mm. so i better get to sleep because i gotta be up at 5 a.m the next day that's hard that's hard mm. you get to pick your heart you know being a, an entrepreneur full time yeah it has it's hard but it's not about it getting easier it's about you getting better mm. and i think a lot of times we say yes to things without realizing we're saying yes to things. We say yes 
to, you know, go to school, get a good job uh, after years and years and years of student debt that's compounded for the rest of your life that you will never pay off. Most people have no idea what that debt looks like on paper. They have no idea what year they'll finish paying that off. We say mm -hmm. yes to that. Then we go and we say yes to a system that employs us for 40 to 60 years. You know, we say mm -hmm. yes to um, going into our old age, our golden years and getting a pay decrease. When we need more money, they give us less money in the form of a retirement. Mm -hmm. We say yes to all those things. We say yes to a chunk of our employment income every single month going into a system, our 401k, and we have no idea what that even means, what it's doing, mm. how it's threatened. We watch the news and we say yes to, well, the Dow dropped, but I have no idea what that means to my family. Mm. And I'm just gonna sit back and watch all these other last names get rich. And I'm, I'm, I'm here still not even understanding what that means on TV. What? And so the truth is we say yes to a lot of things. We think that we're not making decisions. We're making decisions every single day. I can tell you right now, I wanted to say yes to a different type of hard because coming home after a 12 hour shift, I was using my body so much. My nurses know, I mean, I was like, part of my job was constantly moving, caring um, and providing for humans who could not move for themselves. I would come home, mm. ice my back. I would come home, my knees were hurt. So mm. I was saying yes to an entire system. Most of us are right now saying yes to a lot of things in our life, but we are accustomed to saying no to ourselves. Mm. And so here's the thing, it's all hard. It's all mm. hard, being poor, being broke is hard. Mm. Watching your grandma struggle, your mama struggle, now you struggle and you teaching your daughter how to struggle, that's hard. What? Okay, and that's a choice. And so I'll tell you, yeah, being a full-time entrepreneur uh, has its hearts, you know, but I'll tell you that it also uh, has its perks, you know, in the middle of an, an environment, a climate where most people um, don't know how they're going to provide for themselves. Thank you, God. I have had no lack at all. In yeah. fact, once they said they were going to lock down, we got in the car with our kids and we said, well, if we're going to be quarantined, we could be quarantined on the beach. So we're at a beach house right now that we're in for an indefinite amount of weeks in uh, South Texas, right on the national seashore. I'm two minutes from the beach on both sides of me and my children are enjoying this. So yeah, it's hard, okay? mm. but it has its rewards too. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I don't take it lightly. I know that most people can't afford to maintain the one house they live in, let alone two houses during this this environment and so i'm very grateful and i know that it's really god's provisions it's not because i'm so amazing and i made all the right decisions it's because i put myself out there and we tried we yeah. tried something different yeah. you know me and my husband are very aware where we come from and we know that the enemy wants to bring us back we're, we're mm -hmm. we you got to be slicker than that you know you got to mm -hmm. understand that poverty is not just uh something that happened to you it is something that has attached itself to your last name. And mm. once it's attached itself to your last name, the enemy don't even got to bother you no more because he knows that in lack situations, trauma will always show up. Mm. You know, it's no secret that when you don't have what you need, you make decisions out of a survival mindset and survival mindset will gobble up all your internal wealth. Mm. And so, yeah, it's hard. But you know, here's the thing, moms, listen, every day is... Uh, is <laughs> is a journey like there's some days I, i'm i'm thinking i gotta get the kids fed dressed do my baby's hair and be on my first webinar by 9 a.m you know it is what it is i know what my ultimate plan is i i, I don't wrestle with the details because i know what the ultimate goal is yeah. and so you just got to decide what you want to do here's the thing for those of you that are like you know my babies are small and you know i've got so much going on at home and i, I don't see where i have the time the truth is that you have the time. Maybe you've not been given the opportunity to, uh, to give yourself that time. Julia said we give our jobs the time. We give uh, our spouses the time. We give everybody else a piece of us except us. We don't give us a piece of us. And mm -hmm. I want to uh, reference an article I read once that really honestly changed my mindset about this whole topic. And it was written by the American Association of Pediatrics. And they did a global study trying to find the happiest children. Ooh. And they found the happiest children in a third world country where there is no water and no trash systems in Guatemala. So they said, well, hold on, hold on. 
how can these be the happiest children? You know, some of them, their mothers go out and collect trash all day to just turn in plastics and hope to make enough change for food. Some of them are riddled with poverty and, and living in an environment some of us could never even fathom. How are these the world's happiest children? Because here's the truth, moms. We worship our kids. Mm. And I know I'm going to get some flack on this, but it's true. We worship our children, mm. anything they need, anything they want. It comes before what makes sense. It comes before our marriage. Mm. It comes before our purpose. We worship our children. And then the first time these beautiful children get told no or something's hard, then they quit. Mm. And so I, I remember being part of a, a couple's weekend at my church and being super convicted. He, he said, I'm not even going to tell you that you're worshiping your children. I'm going to give you a question to answer for yourself. And he mm -hmm. said, and if you say yes to this, we need to do some work. And, and I know I'm going to step on some toes, but I'm going to say it because there's a purpose here. He said, if there's toys in your bedroom, mm. your bedroom, if there's wow. toys in your bedroom, China, you might, you might be worshiping your children. Oh no, we well we rectified that mug, but it wasn't because of me. I promise you. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying this. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, it. I'm just saying but you write about that because they had toys in the whole house. This was their house, okay? No. And and see, we don't know better. We have no one to tell us, hey, things got to change up a little bit. And I love my children. I adore my children. My whole purpose is to create wealth that my, my children's children's children will have. But when I read this article, it talked about how we think worshiping our kids is what makes them happy. We think I need I need to spend all day with them. I need to spend mornings and afternoons and evenings with them. You know, mm -hmm. but here's the truth. Wow. Here, here is what it takes to have happy children. Here, this is global research by world-renowned pediatricians. Are you ready? It has nothing to do with, are you married? Are you single? It has nothing to do with, do you work a job? Do you own a business? It has nothing to do with any of those things, how you live, the house you live in, how, what kind of car you drive. The truth is that happy children come from mm. happy and fulfilled mothers. Wow. So if you are unhappy and you yeah. are restless because you know you aren't living in your purpose, China said it, we will go our whole life serving everybody else and then we'll get to the end of our life and be bitter because everybody took from us and then we didn't get to step in our calling. We got to take responsibility for that. Yeah. And if That's you're worried strong. about how does this affect my children, at the end of the day, you got to remind yourself that the happiest children on this planet don't even have running water, but you know what they have? They have happy mothers. Yeah. Happy mothers can be busy moms. Happy mothers can be productive mm -hmm. mothers. Happy mm -hmm. mothers can be starting off on their entrepreneurial journey, cutting mm -hmm. the fat out of their life, living lean and mean, you mm -hmm. know, and, and going and taking that, that calling and stepping into it. I, I just want to be a happy mom. Yeah. And I know that I'm happiest when I am producing something, I'm creating yes. something, I'm in partnership. And my yes. children see that. And I, I don't tell you, I get compliments all the time for, and this is not to brag, but just to let you know, I get compliments all the time on my children, how kind they are, how loving they are, how they're the first one to go sit with a new kid in the cafeteria, how they have emotional intelligence. I believe that my children are this way because they've watched their mother and father have yeah. the freedom to yeah. love and to put our family first. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good, both of you. You know, this is such a great necessary conversation. And like you said, we can't have enough. When you think about Wall Street, Traditionally, you've not thought about women and you definitely have not thought about women of color. And we have an opportunity to help you guys change that. And of course, this is for guys too, right? You guys might be watching right now and I want you guys to share this feed because we got a little bit more ground we're gonna cover. And there's so many people that need to have this conversation. If you wanna go grocery shopping right now, but you don't wanna go to the grocery store, what do you use? China or uh, wine, what y'all use on your phone? Oh, the apps, honey. That's the shopping app thing. Cause I, you know, I don't want to go to the shop. Instacart, Amazon. Yeah. If you want to go to the yeah. bank, right? But you don't feel like going to the bank. Where do you go? Online to the banking app. Mm -hmm. To the app on our phone, right? If you want yeah. to check what the weather is, where mm -hmm. do you go? To an app, My right? <laughs> If you want to take a selfie, where do you go? Yeah. And ask for that phone. phone, right? If you yes, want to market your business or what you're doing, where do you go? And ask, 
If you want to become wealthy, where do you go? Go and act. And that's what we're here to tell you today. That it doesn't have to be hard. Because if you get a flow in your life, not underflow, not just a flow, but overflow in your life, you can get some help. You can get some support. I think the number one need probably for most women is help, right? I want to show you guys this article. I'm going to pull this up. And you guys, um, you need to definitely get back with the people that invited you on this call because this is. You left us, Jewel. She'll, she'll come right back. She'll see you in a sec. Okay. Guys, I want to encourage you during this little moment right now, share this, okay? How share, easy, share. how simple, like literally you can hit a button and post and now you are out here being a disciple of wealth creation for other women. Like it took you no effort. All you have to do is share and now anyone in your network can join this conversation. Don't be selfish. Don't assume that there's nobody hurting in your network. Stop that because I, I bet... <laughs> I, I really could have used these conversations a lot earlier in life, you know, Absolutely. I got it now, but I could have, I could have really used these conversations earlier in life. So I would, I want to challenge you. I want to give a call to action. If you can hear our voice, if you can see us, this is not a coincidence, go ahead and hit that share button because there's someone in your network looking for this conversation. You know, Wanda, I want to say this because I think, when you do seek your girlfriends, if they're exposed to this, then they're a better asset to you. You don't need a bunch of liabilities around you. And when you put them in these environments, they get to have their perspective on this information as well. So I love what you just said about that, because otherwise you can't even have the conversation with them. That's so good. That's so good. Let me um, try to open up this. Um, see, technology got to keep technology. learning. <laughs> I want to show you guys this. Uh, let me open it up. This is an article talking about the five top billionaires. Top yes. billionaires. There's another one yeah. talking about the billionaires. Let me see. A billy, a thousand milli. Let's go. Right. And so, and but what I want to bring to their attention is that Bitcoin just came out. So if you already got top millionaires and billionaires, Okay, and Bitcoin just came out in 2009. Then the fact that somebody was able to become a millionaire or a billionaire in such a short amount of time, I mean, to me, that's pretty mind blowing. That's mind blowing. Okay, now this is. Um, I was just, uh, Dr. Joe, I was just reading yesterday with Randy, and I thought this was really interesting. Um, in the last few years, one of the largest advocates against Bitcoin, against it, calling it fraudulent, calling it, you know, really trying to create doubt in it as an asset was JP Morgan, yeah. a large banking institution that is very well connected to the Federal Reserve and the other of uh, banks that are connected. JP Morgan was literally trying to legally find a way to take it down and now they have been reported as one of the largest investors in bitcoin creating the most platforms for bitcoin usage of course mm. if they can yeah. disrupt it first to not interrupt their cash flow if they could disrupt it first and not interrupt their cash flow they're safe but when they realized they could not because this gave the average person the masses in the world an even playing field well let us get ahead of this thing and maximize that's powerful no, it is powerful. And, and this is what you have to really become. You really need to work on becoming an early adopter. And this is why I love these two women so much. They are what I call early adopters. They hear concepts and thank God for everybody. This is no shade for anybody. But the reality is, is that a lot of times uh, women or people, period, if you're overanalyzing, get to the table last after all yeah. the wealth has already been taken up because they're slow to adopt these um, new types of uh, movements that are happening. And Bitcoin is a real one. I'm going to read this to you. And um, you guys probably, let me go back to it. I just want to make sure. Tell me if you guys can, um, can you guys still see it? Yes. All right, cool. So now what this says is, of course, the five 
world's top millionaires. Okay, I'm gonna not gonna read the whole thing, but just a little bit. Bitcoin is a digital asset and payment system with a market capitalization of around 180 billion as of September 2019. It's considered by many to be one of the most successful digital currencies ever created. Now, wait a minute. You can download an app right now called Coinbase and buy it. You can get on Cash App and buy it. But if you're not educated on it, you're probably not going to move on it. Right? So this is why this platform that we partnered with several years ago is so vitally important because you've got to put yourself in a position to educate yourself. Now, watch these words. It's atmospheric rise. So in other words, it's been rising like crazy since the launch in 2009. But bro, the average person didn't even know it was here in 2009. But watch right. 2009 left billions of dollars up for grabs. So if you would have been educated on, on it, you could have started grabbing it because it was for virtually anyone. So it was only natural that the game-changing cryptocurrency created such a diverse and surprising field of millionaires. So here we see 2009, this is not no long time. Years ago, you thought it took 20, 30 years to become wealthy. Now this thing shows up 2009, grabs for virtually anybody, right? Game-changing cryptocurrency, created such a diverse field, all these millionaires have come about. You might say, well, I didn't become a millionaire former because you weren't in the right relationships. See, mm. partnership right now is so important. Yeah. Well, listen to this. It says, of course, nobody knew it at the time, but that's not really true. There were people that did know it. There were people that were getting educated on it. There were people that understood its purpose. There were people that understood that in this decade, I believe we will become a paperless society. So where is this going to leave all the other people who have no idea what the heck is going on? What's going to happen? The rich are going to get richer and the poor are going to get poorer because of lack of revelation. Now, I love what it says because for some people, this would have stopped them. Indeed, it was and still is a risky asset. You don't have to be afraid of risk if you're educated. Although a few in the list below were not only early adopters, watch this, early adopters, put that in the comments right now, early adopters. God give us all an early adopter mindset. Amen. Money come lately job is dangerous. It said, but it also predicted its economic opportunity. So these early adopters got together, they talked, they mastermind. This is what we do all the time. And they realized it was an economic opportunity. Watch this. It was launched in 2009. Uh, nine. These are key takeaways. Bitcoin is the first and remains the most successful blockchain-based cryptocurrency in the world. You don't even have to understand what blockchain-based cryptocurrency means. All you have to do is put yourself in a position to say, how do I get it and how do I trade it? The price of Bitcoin is volatile, ranging from $10 in 2010 to just $20,000 in early 2018. Now the price is hoovering around $10,000. So the volatility did not stop them from becoming wealthy with it. Wow. This is what we got to understand. China and uh, Wanda, we have been so blessed. You guys need to share this feed. You need to get back with the person that invited you on here. Tonight is 6 p.m. Central, 7 Eastern. I'm having Ivan, which is one of our top master teachers in cryptocurrency. He got on yeah. the last night and had me on my head. Woo. He was thinking, had us, and this is why this space is so important because you need to get around thinkers. You need to get around people that are futurists. You need to get in front of the money so that the money can start pursuing you and you not pursuing the money. If you get the education and the revelation, you get there before everybody else. But now it's your job, just like Harriet Tubman, I'm not going to get to freedom and not go back and bring other people with me. That's why we're on here today. We got tons of things that we could be doing right now, but we are committed to one another. We are committed to you. We are committed to the average everyday girl who may be living off of child support. And I was there before, but until I got an attitude and said, I'm not living off of this Negro's money no more more. I'm about to go get my own bag. Nothing changed. I want you ladies to talk about the support that we get in this kind of wealth education. Wow. 
first of all, honey, you broke that thing all the way down. And I believe just being in that kind of environment yeah. to receive that kind of knowledge, how you said you got to get in front of the money so that the money could pursue you. Everybody is behind it and you so lagging, you chasing. I love what we did a call today with, with, with uh, Garrett Roberts. That guy is full of so much wisdom and so much knowledge. He said a lot of people is afraid to go first. They're afraid to pioneer. They're afraid to do something that is um, allowing you to really make the impact first. They're waiting for, well, if it's so good, why is everybody not talking about it? If it's so good, why? like that is the wrong mentality to have. Why do you want to wait for everybody to talk about something opposed to you getting in front of the money and allow the money to pursue you? Right now, when you get it to be around these masterminds, because that's what you get. That's one of the products that's not even on a list when you join our well community is really the masterminding that you get from people that are wiser and more knowledgeable than you because of their experience, because of their results. And then you get to glean from and get a shortcut like the mere fact that you have an opportunity to be amongst these wealth circles is priceless to me. I'm going to be honest with you. Turn next flick and chilling off. Get off of social media scrolling, talking about you inspired and you still not doing nothing and making no impact in your own business. Stop being afraid in 2020 to talk about like I believe that there's so much unnecessary fear around people stepping out to becoming business women. Like put a link in your dang on bio. Take advantage of a micro franchise where all of the software is there available for you. The leadership is there available for you. The support is there available for you. And you get to make a three figure decision. A three figure decision that is not with a bunch of debt that comes along with it. Like the decisions that many people make to go spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars for a semester. Now I'm big on I'm not down on education. I'm big on education, but I'm just up on learning that education from people with the results that I desire and not just going through a system that was designed for you to become an employee for the rest of your life and live in debt. So you go take out this loan to go to school just to get a job to pay for the loan. Come on. At some point, you, you, you cannot keep saying in 2020 with all of this information and knowledge that you're going to tell your children to go and do that. Now, you see, it didn't work for you because it was always about the relationship. Wealthy people. Yes, they send their children to universities as well. But the purpose is different. Listen, the purpose is the relationship. The purpose is the knowledge and how they can become assets to the family business. Go and develop a relationship at this university. So I'm going to put you around the best minds so that you can develop relationships that perhaps we can extract and then we can have a part of our corporation. We got to start thinking differently. Sis, yeah. you're spending a lot of money on bundles and looking cute for some light, sis. I'm just saying, like, you are cute, but it's not getting you nowhere. Like, you're doing a whole lot to, to fulfill this void that you may feel like you have when the truth is everything that you need, you already have. Now it's time to get into the environments that's going to pull that thing outside of you. Bro, like, you're spending a lot of time on unnecessary things when you know that you're keen. Like, you got to walk in that and you got to rise in that. Mm -hmm. And so you don't just get that by talking to your boyfriend around the corner because you grew up with them. I love something that Wanda said a while back. She said, the reality is many of us have established relationships with people. This was my interpretation, Wanda. Many of us have established relationships with people that we call our friends based on our parents' income bracket at that time. So what that means is, well, y'all lived in the same neighborhood simply because y'all parents made about the same amount of money. So y'all went to the same school. So you're you a grown man and a grown woman now. And you still got the same friends based on what y'all had in common, based on your Woo! parents' financial situation. Woo! Now it's 2020. You haven't leveled up yet because you haven't submitted to the idea of having a mentor to take you from a lack mentality. When you read a book and you realize that, wait a minute, this person is talking about me. That's a real aha moment. It requires humility. You got to submit to the fact that there's somebody else that has a different way of thinking. Right. A different way of doing things is getting results that I want. Let me humble myself, put my ego in check and submit to their way of thinking in this particular area. Everybody need a mentor or a coach. Everybody. Everybody need a mentor or a coach. If you're doing it on your own, yeah. talking about why does your mentor or your coach ain't nothing out of your mind. I won't hear. Period. Yep. That's so good. 
That's so good. And that's what you get when you come here. When you partner with the person that invited you, whoever's watch party you're watching, or maybe we invited you or whatever, you partner with an entire wealth focus group that are that love God, that love people, that want to impact our families, that want to impact humanity. Like that's that's the stuff we on. We not just on just being fabulous to be fabulous. Like we want some, how can I make social impact? How can I make financial impact? And the support you get is amazing. So Wanda, will you just talk about the support that they can expect, the education that they can expect when they partner? Yes, absolutely. Listen, I'm a, I'm a big believer. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. We have to, we have to kind of simplify it. You know, this, this concept China, I was the same way. The first time I heard mentor, I was like, mentor, what's that? Somebody who got power over me? Like, y'all, the, the poverty mindset was deep, you guys. I got offended. This is this is how you know you got poverty mindset. You get offended about things just because you simply don't understand them. <laughs> so I was, I was offended. Like, like we choose, like we choose to be offended because we're uneducated. And I was offended when someone suggested I need a mentor or a coach. But let's just keep it very simple. Jesus walked this earth for a little over 30 years. And the entire time, his whole goal was, we call it discipleship. But discipleship is just mentorship. That's it. He's created us to need each other. Okay. Money yeah. making is a team sport, period. That's the way it's created. You're not going to get around that. There's no such thing as self-made. Anyone tell you they're self-made? They're lying. Mm. So, oh, that's Mm. We're, we're created to need mm. mentorship. We are created to need community. And we have mentorship all the time. Sometimes it's the mentorship from our social media. We're getting mentored by the TV. We're getting mentored by our favorite celebrities. You actually, believe it or not, you are being mentored. And I want you to look at your life and look at the fruits of that mentorship. Are you satisfied? If you are not satisfied, guess what? You get to make a choice, change your mentorship. You know, uh, Joel, you said a while ago, you know, we, we live in an era where people will download an app because, you know, everyone else is, is doing it. You know, people will download it Snapchat because everybody has Snapchat. Now people are downloading TikTok because everybody has TikTok. I, I want to give you a call to action. If you have TikTok on your phone, but you don't have Coinbase right there, that is a representation of your net worth. Mm. You got to change it. You got to change it. If you've sat in the mirror with your daughter dancing to I'm a savage, but you haven't sat her down and taught her about a financial book or a personal development book, mm. there you go. There, That is a representation of your network. I'm not saying this from a place of judgment. I'm saying this from a place of recovery. I am a recovering poverty mindset addict. Okay. Mm. I know that what I saw for decades was lack, and it's going to take many more decades to undo all that. And so I'm aware everything I look at, I know it's a choice. Everything I listen to, it's a choice. Everyone I follow, it's a choice. So mm. I want to tell you, you know, what they say is so real. Your relationships are your wealth. Your net worth is your net worth. One, one, one placed relationship, perfectly placed relationship radically will change your last name. It will release your last name. And you've got to kind of, you know, we have this culture that's like no new friends. You know, I, I stick with just the people I grew up with. And, you know, I don't I don't need new friends. I don't. It, that's poverty. And that's a lie that you're being lied to. Culturally, you're being lied to. And I, I think what I really want to do is just challenge people to do some uh, self-reflection. Like this is not to put you in a corner and say, oh, you're doing everything wrong. This is a plea to have you realize that we see so much value in you. We see recovery in you. We see you changing the zip codes of your family, changing what you own and don't own. We see you going back to your children's children and teaching them. I, I read a powerful quote that said, if you help a man become successful, he will go out and be successful. But if you help a woman be successful, she will go Come out on. and teach generations to be Come successful. On. And it's so true. We, we have something in us that's just a little different. 
You know, we have something in us that's a little a bold. And, and if we're talking bold, and if we're talking brave, and we're kind of pushing you and poking you in your chest a little bit, it's out of love. Drew, you mentioned Harriet Tubman. Here's a fact about Harriet Tubman people don't realize. She was able to successfully free 300 slaves, not, not one, not one, not one, stopped halfway and turned around to go back. You know why? Because she had a rule. If you start this journey with me, you got two options. You either finish it with me or I shoot you dead halfway. She had a rule. If you if you got scared and you try to go back, she would shoot you dead. And we have no idea how many people got left because she had to make a decision. And so if we're poking you in the chest a little bit, if we seem a little bit um, excited about what we're doing, if the passion is a little intense, trust me, it's all love because I want to see you finish this journey. Yeah. And, you know, too many times we just sit back and we just accept what this world is given to us. And you're not created to be of this world. You're in this world. And so wow. I talk this way. We talk this way because we know we needed these conversations desperately. I talk yes. this way because I wish someone would have had these conversations with my mother, with my grandmother. I wish someone would have saw them enough to have these conversations with them, think of them enough to think, you know, let me have a mentorship conversation with her. Let me have a discipleship conversation with her. And it didn't happen. It had to start with me. That's fine. I want to, I want you to consider that you are the Harriet Tubman of your family. Mm -hmm. I believe that. I believe that the reason why it's, it's been the way it is up until now is because it had to start with you. You, the one listening to this right now, it started with you. Now, let me ask you something. Are you going to step into that role? Or are you just going to go ahead and push that burden onto your children? Mm. Wow. I know that I don't have the privilege to pretend that my family doesn't have wealth to steal back. I don't have that privilege. My children, I'm not going to put that burden on them. I don't want them to have to start from scratch and figure it out. I'm figuring it out. And I just plead with everyone who's listening to us, understand that we, he, listen, we're no better than anyone. We know that we, we, there's nothing that's in our arsenal that we have that you cannot have. This is mostly us making a few decisions, some bad, some right, some wrong, and getting up and doing it again. Entrepreneurship is nothing but a journey of courage. And we just want to invite you into this space. This network and this community is the most valuable thing I own. And I own buildings. I own real estate. I own um, inventions. But the most valuable thing I own is my net worth. If I had to choose to pick, to do, start all over tomorrow and I can only take one thing with me to rebuild it, it would be my network. I honor it and I cherish this. And I want to invite you into this network so that we can help you have that same that same journey. Wow. This has been so powerful. I can't believe it. Hours gone by already. All right. <laughs> All right. I know that this conversation impacted you. I really want you to get back with the person that invited you. I want you to know that you are enough to make the decision that you can give yourself permission to succeed. China and Wanda, this is why I love my sisters. And uh, we have many powwows, think tanks, masterminds. We want to invite you into that. You know, really, this whole uh, family that we've been joined to is really revolutionary. Everything is changing. It's not going to slow down. And so you just have to make up in your mind, I'm ready to learn, I'm ready to change, I'm ready to grow. So get back with the person that invited you um, on the watch party or if it was me or them or whoever, get back with them. Let them know I'm ready. Give yourself permission to succeed. And don't forget, I'll be right back here tonight, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, with the crypto master teacher himself, Ivan Paycheck. All right, love you guys. Love you, Wanda and China. I love y'all. Love, love you, ladies. Yes. So grateful for you. So much. Love you guys. Love you, bye. Bye.